Hello colleagues, in this remarkably high value production video I'm going to be talking to you about how to detect use of ChatGPT and other generative artificial intelligences in assignments and essays that have been submitted by students. You may be aware that Turnitin offers a similarity report and an originality report now as well. However, due to some concerns about the accuracy of this originality score, we're going to be doing things the old-fashioned way. So in this video, I'm going to talk a bit about how AI generates writing, and I'm going to give you eight tips of things to do to catch AI-generated text in assessments. So the way that generative artificial intelligences generate text is essentially as a next word guessing game. They're a fancy version of autocomplete like you get on your phone when you text. Now obviously there's, there's more to it than that and ChatGPT in particular is very good at remembering context. But what that really boils down to is that it's a very good educated next word guesser instead of just a pure next word guesser. Now what this means is there are two different metrics by which we can measure the likelihood that text was artificially generated. These measures are perplexity and burstiness. Now, perplexity is a score of how unusual a word is as a follow-up to the word before. So, for instance, if I said something like, we wish you a merry... If the next word was Christmas, that would have a very low perplexity score. If the next word was Thursday, that would have quite a high perplexity score. And if the next word was something like sandwich, that would be a really high perplexity score. AI tends to have very low perplexity because it just goes with whichever word best fits the sentence. Burstiness is kind of the same thing, but on a sentence scale. Burstiness refers to variety in the style, the length and the rhythm of sentences. Human beings naturally have quite high burstiness. Artificial intelligence has naturally quite low burstiness. So now that I've talked a bit about perplexity and burstiness, you're well positioned to do the same job that an AI detector does because AI detectors simply assign a score to the perplexity and burstiness of the piece of text that they're reading. So I'm going to give you eight tips, some of which are going to use that perplexity and burstiness stuff, but each of which you can use while looking through work to sort of tip you off to whether there's a chance that the text is AI generated. So tip one is just to consider the perplexity and burstiness yourself while you're reading. Is it sort of quite a flat tone? Are there lots of varied or unusual word choices that you're spotting? The more that a text is boring and drab and reads at a very sort of flat tempo and pace with very little creativity or difference, the more likely it is that it was written by an artificial intelligence. Tip number two is to look out for the level of detail that the writing uses. AI-generated writing tends to stay quite shallow. It doesn't tend to go into much detail, particularly in terms of critical evaluation. And one particular style of writing is quite common, particularly to ChatGPT, which is to give you a list of different responses to the prompt that you've given, usually about six to ten. Each of the different entries in that list will have less than a paragraph's worth of very simple detail. So if you see a student particularly repeatedly using lists of fairly basic and shallow explanations, then the likelihood grows that they've used generative AI while writing. Tip number three, generative AI does not like getting critical. If you see lots of hedging of bets, Lots of talk about how there are very good arguments on both sides and we can't come up with a definitive most important factor. Again, the likelihood goes up that we might be dealing with generative AI. Tip number four. Very often, GPT ends its generated texts with a specific in conclusion sentence. So if you see a student who's repeatedly summing up short question answers with an in conclusion or in summary, then again, this makes it plausible that ChatGPT is being used. Note, however, that this is just another kind of burstiness, right? It just means that the different variety or the level of variety is quite low over the different answers that the student is giving. This one in particular needs to be taken with a pinch of salt because after all, we do teach our students to do a proper conclusion as well. Tip number five is a bit of a longer tip and it's all about citations. 
because in many respects, generative AI doesn't get on too well with citations. First and foremost, most of them will only actually use citations if explicitly prompted. So if a student who isn't particularly familiar with ChatGPT is trying to use it to write an essay and doesn't think to ask it to include citations, it won't. And this means that a couple of things to look out for include references at the end, but no citations in the body of the text. This shows that a student might be aware that they need to include sources somewhere, but haven't thought to add them as citations. On a similar note, another thing that you can check is if the citations included, the sources that are cited actually match the content of the text that's written in the essay. If not, this suggests that they might have been added later on, rather than being added based on the content that the student was writing. Another thing to look out for might become more outdated quite quickly, but that's the fact that AI at current time of recording tends to make what's called hallucinations. Now this is where the generative process by which they write actually captures false information rather than just true information. And AI is particularly notorious at the moment for creating fake citations. These are well formatted and look perfectly real. However, if you look into them, you'll find that while it might be a real author or it might be a real paper title or journal, those in combination don't actually lead to a real article. So you can check those for yourself or you can use cite.ai to find out if they're real citations that have been included. Tip number six is to get a bit of help from technology for yourself. Hopefully, if you've been watching this video, you'll have seen why it is that AI detectors aren't necessarily particularly reliable. After all, human beings can just happen to write with low burstiness and low perplexity, and that would lead AI detectors to think that the writing was by an artificial intelligence. However, they're not just random number generators. And if you paste a bit of text into an AI detector, then you might use it to corroborate your suspicions. So don't just use it on its own, but rather use it to help back up your hunch that something might have been AI written. There are a few AI detectors that I recommend. One of them is Zero GPT, which was designed by and for educators. Another one is Content at Scale, which is just a nice clean AI detector. And finally, OpenAI have their own AI detector. This is the people who made ChatGPT, and theirs is called Text Classifier. So have a look at the three of those, and I recommend using them in combination. Don't just pick one to use, use all three. And the more text you can fit in, the more reliable the result that you're going to get. Tip number seven is a bit of an anti-tip, which is to remember that all of the things that I've mentioned here can be taken away at the drop of a hat. And the quickest way for that to happen is for a student to use some paraphrasing or translation software like Quillbot or Google Translate. As soon as these tools are used, the perplexity of a piece of text can go through the roof, which can mask the presence of AI from even the most arduous observer. So do consider looking out for other danger signs and remember to use standard techniques as well, like comparing text a student has written with the ability that they've displayed in seminars. My final tip is tip number eight, which is that there is a place to go to try out all of these techniques in the wild, and that's ROFT, real or fake text, .io. On this website, you can test yourself and read responses to a human-generated prompt that at some point switch from being written by a human to being written by an artificial intelligence. So it's just a really good playground to try out some of these techniques. So hopefully those have been some helpful tips for you in your continued practice. But before I let you go, I should remind you that we're talking about the bleeding edge of technology here. And all of the stuff I've talked about in this video is liable to become outdated quite quickly. So do check the date that this video was uploaded and make sure that it's not too long ago, in which case you might do better by finding some resources online to help you. And if it's too long ago, then we'll all have been taken over by ChatGPT by now anyway. So best of luck with your detection and do drop me an email if you want to ask any questions. My email address will be appearing on the screen now. See you all soon. Bye for now.